What's going on guys? It's Modern, finally back with another episode of Road to the Top. Uh, so you guys might be wondering, because I've said a bunch on Twitter how I would be starting up a consistent schedule, yet I never actually posted anything. So here's the deal with that. Uh, been, I've been trying to situate some things uh, in between family, school, and work. Uh, things have been pretty rough lately on all three ends, and uh, it's been pretty tough trying to go and record episodes for Road to the Top, uh, as well as sort of managing everything else in my life. Uh, I've been pretty busy. That's the way to put it. Hopefully, though, uh, spring break is coming. I'm going to be done with all of my midterms, or at least most of them, uh, as well as uh, all of the projects that I've been working on for my classes. So hopefully, hopefully, guys, we'll be able to have a consistent schedule out, probably starting next week, I hope. Um, my hope is that I can post a video every day uh, during the week and then maybe once on the weekends. I might also uh, divvy it up a little bit so I do three during the week and then uh, one on each of the weekend days, but I will most likely just stick to a uh, consistent schedule where I have videos coming out during the week. Uh, maybe not on Monday, but uh, I'm going to try for four or five videos a week uh, is my goal. Um, like I said, though, spring break's coming up, so I'm going to have a lot of time to go and record some videos. So uh, even if I do not stick to the con uh, consistent schedule later, uh, either this month or maybe even further than that and beyond, um, I'll at least be able to keep it up for a little bit, and then I'll update you guys. I'll, I'll keep you updated on uh, how things are going, and uh, if my plans change, they change. Uh, but like I said, I'll keep you guys updated. Anyways... Uh, without further ado, we will start the matchmaking journey. <laughs> uh, obviously, as you can see, we're using a different team now. Um, originally, I was using my dual primal team that I've used uh, probably the past two months. Uh, for January and February, most of the competitions that I went to, I did use the Salamence dual primal team that uh, you have seen on the last, I think, four episodes of Road to the Top. Going to be playing a player from Japan with a 1772 rating, uh, running a Ray Ogre team, uh, pretty standard looking from what I know. Uh, it actually looks very similar to a team that I ran at the very beginning of the season. Uh, what I would expect right here is that they have a very offensive Kyogre. Um, and it looks like they're actually pretty weak to Ferrothorn too. Uh, the only Pokemon on their team that really deals with it is their Rayquaza. And if their Landorus has Super Power, that could also help them deal with it. Uh, but for the most part, they really don't have the most solid matchup against that. And uh, fortunate, fortunately for me, I do actually have a really good matchup against them. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lead Cresselia and Smeargle straight off the bat. Uh, Groudon in the back, and I would imagine I just go Salamence. Here. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go Salamence. And the reason being is that I could lead a Salamence lead and then sort of counter their uh, Rayquaza and maybe something else. Um, or maybe if they lead Landorus, uh, I could also just sort of lead against that. Um, Salamence is a pretty solid lead against Ray Ogre. My only issue is that I really don't like it when I have to rely on Salamence for the match. And so I'd rather just lead Cresselia Smeargle right here. Uh, just because I do have the Crafty Shield to prevent any taunts. And I also have Wide Guard, so if they uh, lead with Kyogre and maybe Rayquaza, uh, I can just go for the Wide Guard, protect myself from those attacks. And then, um, like I said, Crafty Shield is also there. Uh, so let's see, Cresselia and Smeargle, uh, insanely passive lead, but hopefully I can get myself set up with Gravity and Dark Void, as I actually lead the Kyogre and the uh, Crobat. So looks like I'm actually in a very good position straight off the bat. Uh, Spear Goal obviously carries the Focus Sash right here, um, which will allow it to survive the Water Spout. And then uh, Cresselia has a Citrus Berry, so if they go for the Super Fang play, then I should be able to get my HP all the way back up. <gasps> no, but Cresselia has 227 HP, which I forgot to change, so that could actually be big. Um, but I have, I have to go for the Trick Room and uh, Crafty Shield right here. reason being is that 
more than likely they're going to taunt with the Crobat because they don't really have a good answer for the Smeargle. Uh, as they do actually go for the taunt into the Smeargle and a Water Spout with their Kyogre. Uh, Cresselia definitely survives this attack. Uh, so yeah, I do survive it with a decent amount of HP. Uh, Citrus will actually put it into a range where I survive another one, which is also really nice. Um, but now I'm just free to, I think, Spiky Shield. Actually, I'm not going to Spiky Shield. I'm going to switch into Groudon and go for Gravity. That makes a lot more sense. Uh, the reason it makes a little bit more sense right here is I have a good feeling they're just going to protect their Kyogre and go for either a Super Fang or a Taunt into Smeargle. Uh, I would prefer if they went for a, uh, not a Super Fang, a Taunt, just because Groudon, uh, obviously it'll be able to survive a lot of attacks if it's at max HP. The moment it gets Super Fanged, half HP, not so nice. Um, but if they do Super Fang, I should be in a decent position still because I don't expect them to go for an attack with their Kyogre. So let's see, they do protect, which is what I predicted. Um, gravity comes out, which is really nice. And I'm in a really nice position right here because I can just go for the Ice Beam and Precipice Blades next turn. Uh, so let's see. Okay, they do go for the Taunt, though, which is actually really nice for me. Um, like I was saying, Super Fang was probably a better play, but Taunt was just the 100% option. Uh, but Super Fang would have predicted a potential switch, which would have been actually really good for me. But now I'm just free to go for an Ice Beam into the Crobat slot, as well as a Precipice Blades. Because this, punish this punishes a Rayquaza switch in. Uh, unless they are a minimum speed Kyogre, then obviously they would speed tie with my Groudon. But Ice Beam plus Precipice Blades should almost definitely get a KO on this Rayquaza right here. Uh, so let's see. Ice Beam. Ooh, they might actually be a Salt Vest or something. Um... Or just a really bulky Rayquaza. But this Precipice Blades definitely picks up the knockout. Actually, I actually think I crit the Kyogre, uh, which is actually pretty nice for me. Um, they're probably going for the water attack right here, as they are. But uh, they really don't have any options to win at this point, I think. Um, obviously, they would need to reset the rain. But to do that, they would need to switch out and then have their other Pokemon survive. And their other Pokemon is the uh, Clefairy, actually. So that's pretty bad for them. Uh, so I think what I'll do right here is I'll just go for a skill swap. Actually, what, are the, what do I have in the back? I have Smeargle, so I'm fine. So what I'll actually do is I'll switch in Smeargle and go for a Precipice Blades, I think. Because how, how this is going to work out right here is they think they're going to switch in Crobat, and then uh, they'll get a free uh, switch in to their Kyogre the next turn. Uh, as they actually go for the Protect with Clefairy, so I'm just going to knock out the Kyogre right here. Uh, I believe that was a... No, it wasn't a double Protect. They went for the Water move last turn. Uh, so I get the Precipice Blades off, uh, both of them protect though. Uh, Groudon's Taunt wears off, which is pretty relevant at this point, and uh, now I can pretty much just go for a Spiky Shield and a Precipice Blades, I think. The idea is, by switching in Smeargle, I'll be able to go for Wide Guard to stop the attacks from Kyogre. Um, they're actually not going to go for the Protect, though, so that's pretty good for me. Um, they actually go for Heal Pulse with their Clefairy, which is pretty interesting. Uh, really nice move, considering that it restores uh, Kyogre's HP for Water Spout, but I think Precipice Blades actually picks up the Knockout right here. Ooh, and they just barely survive, too. Uh, they do go for the Ice Beam into Smeargle, which is actually also really nice for me right here. Uh, because now what I can do is I can just go for another Precipice Blades, and... A Dark Void. Yeah, because now I think they have to absolutely switch out their Kyogre. 
And then hopefully Precipice Blades picks up a knockout right here under their Clefairy. Uh, because, like I said, what I can do this next turn uh, when Kyogre comes in is just go for a Wide Guard and a Precipice Blades. And to play it even more safe, I could actually just go for the Rock Slide, which is really nice. Ooh, but they actually survive a Precipice Blades. Uh, Dark Void's going to go off right here, but the Crobat most likely carries the Lumberry, I would imagine. Um, I definitely think that Precipice Blades was a roll. There's no way that this Crobat is EV to survive that attack. Um, the gravity returns to normal, so I will not be able to target down this Crobat. Um, so let's see. I have the Salamence in the back, which puts me in a really nice position. Uh, because obviously I can just outspeed the uh, Kyogre and just go for something like a Hyper Voice to pick up the, uh, what is it, just finish off the knockout. So yeah, I can just go for a Dark Void and a Rock Slide right here. As I actually switch out Crobat, so it's definitely, um, as long as this connects right here, I should be able to, to take out the Kyogre. Yeah, and the Clefairy doesn't protect either, so they were put in a pretty bad position. Uh, like I said, the Smeargle and Cresselia lead, although it is very, very passive, um, a lot of Ray Ogre teams really don't have a good way to deal with it. Um, yeah, I mean, it, like, really, Ray Ogre teams, they really rely on the Rayquaza to beat Ferrothorn, and they almost always bring Rayquaza Kyogre. And then usually the other two Pokemon that they have are also really passive. Uh, usually something like Crobat to deal with Smeargle. Uh, and then obviously Clefairy for redirection is nice. Uh, some people use Amoongus, which is also pretty cool too. But yeah, at this point I can just go for Dark Void Rock Slide. Uh, the match is over. They have no way to actually KO my Groudon at this point, I think. Uh, maybe barring like if they... I don't know, if, if they crit me... Um, a lot of times with Moonblast, and somehow I keep missing a Rock Slide or <laughs> a Fire Punch on the Clefairy. I have no idea. Uh, but yeah, no. The the Cresselia Smeargle lead, very, very nice. Even though it's passive, most Ray Ogre teams don't have an answer to Crafty Shield as well as the... Um, as well as the Trick Room, because from there I can just go for Gravity and a Precipice Blades. Alright, so we're going to go into the second match for today. Um, so yeah, that match, just sort of highlighting the power of Groudon, uh, ju as, just like most matches with Groudon in them, funny enough. Uh, Gravity and Groudon is really, really nice. I also like the Ice combination with Cresselia, uh, just because once you have that Gravity up, uh, Ice Beam and Precipice Blades really, really punishes, uh, Rayquaza who have not Mega Evolved yet, as in if they... Uh, don't lead their Rayquaza if they just keep it in the back for the weather. Uh, because obviously, as you saw in that situation, I could just Ice Beam the Rayquaza and then Precipice Blades, and then it just instantly one-hit knockouts their uh, Rayquaza. And then obviously, if they have mega then what I can go for is just a Skill Swap, as well as a Precipice Blades, assuming that I have the Gravity up. And again, it's still a really nice position. Uh, next opponent's going to be Naho from Japan, 1826 rating, so getting some of the higher ranked players. And they're actually running a pretty cool team right here, uh, running the Dialga and Groudon team. Uh, that I, I think a few players have actually ran in the past. Um, I know that Hibiki VGC has actually been using it in his YouTube series. Uh, I also believe Marcus Strider is using something similar to it. I believe it's just Wolfie Glick's team, though, uh, with which he actually won the regional, which is pretty nice. Uh, Wolfie Glick, not not um, not Marcus. Ooh, and my DS is dying, so let's plug that in. Uh, so, Groudon again, really, really good in this matchup. Um, Eveltal is also really nice against Groudon and Salamence. Um, okay, so I'm going to have to play on the side right here, I think. No. No, I'll be fine. Okay. Making a stretch, but everything fits. <laughs> okay. So I think I definitely want to just lead Salamence and Eveltal right here. Um, and in the back, I'll just bring Groudon and Cresselia. So the reason I'm going for this lead and not something as passive as before is because against something like Dialga and Groudon, as well as the Salamence on the team, 
Uh, if you don't start getting damage out immediately, then you can put yourself in a really bad position. And also that my opponent really needs to play around the Groudon too, so... Um, Eveltol just gets in a good position. I can go for a lot of Snarls, uh, get rid of their special attack. But they actually bring Whimsicott to this match, so I'm not really sure what they're going to be doing now. I'd imagine just a Tailwind and maybe a Fake Out onto Salamence, but what I'm going to go for is just a Hyper Voice and I think a Dark Pulse. into. Actually, not a Dark Pulse. Um, I'll go for a Snarl. Reason I'm going for Snarl is because I want to sort of target down this Whimsicott. Um, it's one of their only real answers to my Salamence. Uh, maybe if they bring in their Dialga with the Tailwind, that could also be interesting. Uh, they could also be a Trick Room set, which is not uncommon. Uh, some people have actually been very successful with Trick Room Whimsicott. Um, both Pokemon going to Mega Evolve here. Let's see what the moves they go for. I'd imagine they'd fake out Salamence, but I don't want to risk them just targeting down Eveltal right here. Uh, although, like, oh, and they actually fake out Eveltal, so that's actually really nice for me. Um, Hyper Voice is going to do a lot of damage right here. Uh, and it looks like they are going for the Trick Room with their Whimsicott. Okay, and they are, so this is pretty interesting. Um, I'm not really sure what they go for in this situation, though. Uh, I'd imagine they just bring in the Dialga. Yeah, but now I'm just going to double-edge the Kangaskhan and Snarl. Uh, Eveltol can easily take these double-edges, barring a crit. Uh, they're running Grass Whistle! Okay, so maybe they have... Oh, they're running it with Gravity. Okay, that makes sense. Oh, but they do crit me with the double-edge, so I'm not going to take that. Uh, Eveltol easily takes... Uh, Two double edges after an intimidate. Uh, maybe after the fake out, it's a pretty big roll. Uh, double edge definitely going to pick up the knockout, though, this next turn on the Groudon. Or, sorry, next attack. Uh, but that crit was really unfortunate. That meant that um, Whimsicott's not going down, so it can potentially go for a Grass Whistle again. And then I imagine they just bring in Dialga next turn, which is pretty threatening. Let's see. Do they bring out Dialga? Okay, they do. So that's pretty nice for me. And I guess what I have to do is just switch Salamence out into Cresselia and then go for a Precipice Blades. I don't really have any other option, honestly. Um, I mean, if they get the Grass Whistle off on Groudon, at least I burn a Sleep turn. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely it's extremely unfortunate that I missed that Snarl. Because this turn, I could actually just win... Uh, by going for a switch into Cresselia and a Protect, and then following it up with a Precipice Blades. So yep, just going to switch out into Cresselia, go for the Precipice Blades, and hopefully we connect. That is the hope. We connect, Grass Whistle does not connect with Groudon, um, and then they target down Cresselia. Yeah, and we avoid uh, Dragon Pulse, Going to go into the Groudon slot, actually, I think. So, nice prediction there. Uh, I am EV'd to survive attacks like that, though, which is pretty nice, uh, because this is going to put me in a really nice position. Uh, Dialga survives a Precipice Blade, which is a bit unfortunate, um, but I'm still in a really nice position. I mean, uh, I can still go for the Precipice Blades. I know I can survive another Dragon Pulse, which is really nice. Um... And actually, if I really want to, I could just skill swap and Precipice Blades uh, my Groudon. Gravity, not really necessary at this point, just because... Um, just because I don't want to support their Groudon. Because what it means is that Salamence and Cresselia will get hit by the uh, Precipice Blades from their side. And I'll actually play it even more safe. I'm just going to Fire Punch the Dialga. Because I know that my Salamence can win one-on-one -on -one, um, against their Groudon. And they actually go for the Gravity, so they're going for those plays. Um, 
So that would actually help me out right here. Uh, hopefully I win the speed tie, as I do. So this is really good for me. Um, so I'll at least be able to KO the Dialga right here. I will be, unfortunately, losing my Grout on this turn. Um, but there's really nothing they can do against my Salamence. I win one-on-one -on -one unless they critical hit my, uh, sorry, my Salamence. Um, but yeah, that was a nice prediction by my opponent. Going for the Gravity, uh, expecting me to go for the uh, Skill Swap play. But like I said, I would rather play it absolutely safe, make sure that if they do go for the um, attack with the Dialga or something, as well as from their Groudon, uh, they would pretty much have to win two 50-50s to KO, um, both with either Gravity Precipice Blades or maybe a Dragon Pulse and a Fire Punch. Because now what I can do is I can just Ice Beam and Protect, stall out the Trick Room, and then obviously Hyper Voice does a lot of damage. Um, hopefully they don't Critical Hit my Cresselia or something weird this turn, um, just because that would mean Precipice Blades is single target. Although, I still don't go down to one Precipice Blades, but I just want to play absolutely safe, 100%. They actually predict me and go for a Swords Dance, though, so that's really bad. <laughs> So the Snarl Miss, definitely, definitely working out for my opponent this match. I'm still not sure if a Precipice Blades can knock out Salamence in one shot, though. Oops. Okay, so if he's max attack, it's 100%. Oh shit, what'd I go for? I went for a Tailwind, didn't I? Okay, I went for a Double Edge. That's better than nothing. That's not gonna KO, though. Hyper Voice wouldn't have KO'd either. Yeah, and they're just gonna connect with Precipice Blades, so... Uh, opponent getting a really nice prediction off right there. Um, but yeah, like I said, the Snorl Miss definitely mattered. Um, as well as the fact that I... Uh, let them get the Swords Dance up. I probably should have just attacked that turn because Trick Room was gonna end, though, so... Uh, more so a misplay on my end than a good play on my opponent, I think. Um, they had to bank on me going for that Protect play, but it made absolutely no sense for me to go for the uh, Protect right there, I think. But yeah, at least we know that for the future. Um, definitely going to try to play around that in the future. Uh, I mean, obviously, uh, Swords Dance is not a very popular move on Groudon. Uh, most people go with Rock Slide just because you're not always able to get a Gravity off. Uh, and it means if someone has something like Salamence and Kyogre, uh, Salamence completely walls Groudon and they just win one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I mean, Sword Stance is not a move that I would personally use on Groudon, in my opinion. Uh, it's a very, very prediction-based move. It's a move that requires you to have Gravity up to even utilize. Uh, because Fire Punch is not really going to be one-hit KOing very many Pokemon uh, like Salamence. Uh, obviously not Rayquaza. Uh, nothing dragon type, nothing with Kyogre, um, unless you hit a Precipice Blades, which still, gravity makes that a safer play. So let's see if we're actually going to be able to get another match. And yes, we are doing three matches for this episode. I think three matches is better than two for videos. Um, obviously with how fast uh, these matches have been so far. Um, it's a little bit easier to fit three into one episode. So let's see, are we able to connect again? I don't know if we will be able to. Oh, but yep, yeah, that's going to be the end of the episode, guys. Uh, thanks a lot for watching the video and checking out my channel. If you really enjoyed this video or if you liked what I'm talking about, please go and leave a like and maybe even go and subscribe if you want to go and keep watching this content. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.